Hi and welcome back! Today I'm going to create a vintage card with a heart on top so it would be perfect for a Valentine's Day card but depending on the sentiment that you choose to go with it can be used for other occasions as well. I'm starting with Nina Desert Storm cardstock and I'm going to cut it down to be 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half. That's 80 pounds cardstock and for the layers of a card I always like to go with 80 pounds. I'll use this die to cut out my panel and uh, these dies come from a set that I had for ages, more than 5 or 6 years ago I got this one, but it is one of those really versatile die sets that uh, it's fun to have. It's the Essential Labels by Spellbinders. Every other die, die cuts the shape and uh, the ones in between do add uh, a little dots all around. So I'm going to combine two of those, one inside the other, and run them through my die cutting machine. And of course to keep the dies in place so they don't shift as I run them through my die cutting machine, I did use low tack tape. And I don't throw this tape away, I usually uh, stick them on top of my machine so that I can reuse it the next time I want to die cut something. And I don't know if your die cutting machine looks like mine, but uh, it usually has little pieces of uh, washi tape or low tack tape on top of it. Anyway, I have my panel here and I think it looks just gorgeous. I absolutely love this shape and I think it adds something extra on a card, especially when you go vintage. Now I'm going to work on the focal point and for that I'm going to do some foiling. These hearts, the foiling plates, are from the latest kit by Spellbinders and you can check it down below. If you don't have this foiling kit, then of course you can just die cut a heart to replicate the design and make a similar card. However, adding foiling on a focal point really adds that extra touch on a card. Now, the kit comes with red foil, however, I'm going to use copper one that I had in my stash. I'm using this uh, handy little uh, a foil trimmer to cut out the pieces so that I don't waste any foil and I'm also going to cut out a piece for the sentiment as well. As my foiling machine is getting warm I'm going to prepare all the pieces. I like to secure the um, foiling plates on top of my paper and the foil using some low tack tape or you can use washi tape for sure. Just to make sure that nothing is going to shift, there is a lot of movement there since you have to take out the platform and run it through your die cutting machine, so it's better to be safe. For my heart I decided to go with this dark red cardstock. Since I'm going for a vintage look and feel, I didn't want to use any bright red color for my heart. Now my foiling machine is ready, nice and warm. I'm going to place the two sandwiches that I created, the heart and the sentiment. And then I'm going to press that button and wait for it to stop blinking. I can place the plates on top. You have to wait for a few seconds and then this is going to stop blinking and you can take the whole platform and run it through your die cutting machine. I'm doing that very slowly and a couple of times and every time I get a good impression. This time I didn't have any overfoiling, but if you get some overfoiling, you can always uh, erase it with a sand eraser. Now these plates are quite warm, that's why I'm going to use my uh, magnetic tweezers there. This is uh, not so hot that it is going to burn your fingers but it is better to avoid. Now you can see the beautiful heart and how copper looks on top of um, dark cardstock, dark uh, red cardstock. I absolutely love the look. And here is the sentiment that I foiled on the craft cardstock. I'm going to do some die cutting and I prepare all the pieces that I need for the finished card. So I have the heart and the die around it. I'm also going to use this label die to die cut my sentiment. And then that foil kit also comes with um, a set of tiny little uh, flowers as well as those tiny little leaves. Now notice that since I am going for a vintage looking card, I am not going to die cut the flowers from white cardstock. This is off-white vanilla actually. And uh, I am going to show you how I die cut these flowers, a set of two and a set of two leaves, but I will go ahead and die cut even more. I will also die cut more leaves from a different colored uh, green cardstock, a lighter one, so that I have some variation on the, the finished card. 
Now back to my panel, I'm going to do some stamping. For that I'm using a very old stamp that I had in my stash for years. This is a text stamp that I keep on using again and again, mainly on my art journal projects. I'm going to uh, stamp that with vintage photo and I'm not going for the perfect impression. This is why I'm not using a stamping platform or an acrylic block. This is going to give something extra, a visual texture on my background to make it more interesting, which is already interesting just because it has that lovely shape and the line of dots all around. Now I'm going to do some inking only on the edges, again using vintage photo. And by the way, this is not uh, the oxide, it's the original uh, distress ink. Now here is what I found. I forgot completely my technique of uh, inking with uh, distress ink. Just because I moved on into inking with the oxides, I find that I got more heavy-handed just because the oxides uh, blend beautifully and even if you are more heavy-handed, it doesn't really matter. So I had to adjust my pressure here and remember how I did it. Very, very lightly, better to go over the areas again and again instead of having blotches of uh, ink here and there that you cannot move. This is not the case with oxide since they stay on top of the paper and you can always move them around. So anyway, back to the card, I am using a darker shade of uh, brown only at the very edge just to darken it up a little bit. And I am going to repeat the same process, inking up the edges on the sentiment just a little bit so that it has the same look and feel with the background panel. For the same reason, I'm going to ink up lightly the edges of the leaves. I'm not adding too much, just a touch, just touching the blending tool on top of them, as well as the flowers, so they don't look as bright. And it's time to start assembling my card. The heart is going on top first. I have foam scores at the back for some added dimension. And then I'm going to place the sentiment on top. The sentiment has a tiny strip of uh, foam tape on each side so that um, it is aligned with the heart. On the flowers I did add some dimension using my tool there, but you can do that with your fingers as well. And then I'm going to stick the small flower on top of the larger one, making sure that it is uh, offset so that it looks fuller. I'm going to repeat the same process to create three flowers. And I did the same thing for the leaves, I'm adding some dimension with my tool, again you can do that with your fingers. And I'm going to use my tweezers and pinch them on the edge so that they look even more dimensional. I am embellishing with the flowers and the leaves the sentiment on the edges and uh, I'm going to use two of the flowers on one side and the, the other flower on the other side. Now I did use some uh, a tiny little foam scores at the back so that they are leveled with the sentiment and the heart. And for the third flower I'm going with glue. On a scrap piece of paper I'm adding a blob of glue so that I can easily touch the leaves there and then tuck them underneath the flowers. I will make sure that I uh, place different colors of leaves next to each other so that uh, the composition looks more interesting, so a darker and a lighter leaf. And here is the finished look. There is something with vintage projects and pearls, so I always like to somehow incorporate them in my projects. That's why I'm using these tiny pearls. These are from uh, Dress My Craft and they are called flower pearls. I'm going to add three of them on each and every one of the flowers at the center. And just because these are super tiny, my embellishment wand to the rescue. It's super handy to work with it and I always keep it on my desk next to me. Now, of course, you can stick this panel on top of a pre-folded card that's four and a quarter by five and a half. However, I wanted to keep that shape. That's why I die cut two more panels. And this is vanilla cardstock so that it matches the look and feel. I don't want to have anything bright white. I'm going to stick the panel on one of those two shapes which is exactly identical, but you will be able to see that um, vanilla cardstock peeking through those dots. Then for the other panel I'm going to bring in my scoring board and uh, I am going to score a line at the top. It can be half an inch, it's up to you. It can be three quarters of an inch. 
By the way, my mini scoring board is by Dress My Craft, they have some really handy tools. This is going to be the inside of my card, so I'm going to fold the top, make sure that it is, I have a nice crease there with my bone folder, and then I'm going to add glue up there. You can always go with uh, double-sided tape if you like. I'm going to stick that at the back of my card front. They match perfectly one on top of the other since I used the same tie. And my card is ready. I absolutely love how this card turned out and uh, I hope that you had fun and that you got inspired. Down below you will find the links to everything I used. Thank you all so much for watching today and I'll see you all next time.